Doc Thompson on 700 WLW. All right, the details have finally come out. Let me lay out how this all came about. Code is the Cincinnati Organized and Dedicated Employees Union. Code, Cincinnati Organized and Dedicated Employees. It is a, uh, it's a union of about 800 members for mid-level management in the city of Cincinnati. Which, quick little side note, maybe my perception is just off, but 800 mid-level managers seems a little high. I'm not sure what all that entails. It seems like a large number. Yes, Cincinnati is a big town. But 800 mid-level managers, hmm. All right, seems a little bit high. Regardless, Diana Fry uh, was a former president of it. And there are allegations that she absconded with over $750,000. We had been receiving reports of this for weeks. Actually, we heard some rumblings a long time ago, but they were, they were just rumblings. We hear a lot of stuff. People want to call. They'll try to rat out a friend, a neighbor, or make something up about them. There's a lot of allegations that fly, and some of them just because people are trying to, to give someone the business. They're trying to screw them over. So we have to be very careful about what we, what we put on the air, the information we gather. But as soon as this took on uh, some more substantiability that we said, you know, we got to look into it more and more beyond just somebody making a, you know, a quick accusation out and about somewhere. We actually had reports to our newsroom that she was missing for a couple of days. Then we had reports that there was $750,000 missing. So they started looking into it and looking into it, and finally they got to the bottom of it. Now the entire thing has broken. She has been indicted. In fact, I want to play a clip of uh, U.S. Assistant Attorney Timothy uh, Mangan. Uh, this is part of the Labor Department investigation. They laid out the, in, the entire thing against her. And uh, here's the announcement they made about the indictment. We're here today to announce the indictment of Code President Diana Fry. She was indicted this morning by a federal grand jury on one count of wire fraud. We're here today to announce the indictment of... All right. One count of wire fraud. This, uh, this could hold uh, 20 years in prison, $1.5 million fine. It's usually twice the amount that, that somebody would embezzle if you get uh, convicted of that that they charge you for. This is what's happening in the case right now. But I want to play for you some clips. These are calls from uh, the Tesloni and Tracy received yesterday. We have the basic information of, of what's going on in the case. And yeah, there's only one count of the indictment at this point. If it really is $750,000 that she embezzled over six and a half years and multiple con- uh, uh, counts, then there could be other charges, I would guess, coming down the road. But this is what we know so far. So yesterday, Saloni and Tracy lay the thing out there. They get two very powerful calls. One of them allegedly from her brother-in-law, her husband's brother. I'm going to play that one for you in a minute. It was a blistering assault on her. The other one, not quite as significant, still pretty powerful. It's uh, Don Steins, a former code member, uh, senior engineer in the city's transportation and engineering department, that may have been one of the early people to blow the whistle and say, hey, something's not right with this stuff. Here is Don Stein calling into Sloney and Tracy just randomly yesterday afternoon. Hi, Don. You're on the show with Sloney and Tracy. What's up? Hey, Sloney and Tracy. Um, I just wanted to give you a shout, clarify some things. Uh, I don't know... Too much. I can't speak really about the investigation mm-hmm. that's going on by the feds and such. But I filed. I've been inquiring into this for uh, about two years now, and uh, communicating with Diana Fry and other board members with Code. I'm a Code member okay. again for five years, and I have not been happy with some of their answers and uh, the whole pension deal. Uh, have been giving them uh, my theories. I am an attorney and uh, mm-hmm. an engineer, um, and finally it came to a head. I was not getting the information I wanted. I was unhappy with some representation. Uh, elections, we didn't have them. Uh, there was no communications. Uh, when you did start talking to um, people on the board, they would uh, clam up if you raised issues. And finally, what I did was uh, I asked to see the books. I Very asked good. to see the books good back in uh, March, I believe it was. And yeah. at that point, uh, well, I won't go into uh, the details of what the board did, but I ended up filing a, a complaint with the State Employment Relations Board. 
in June. And uh, well, Don, let me ask you: Do you think do you think Miss Fry acted alone then? That's a tough one. Yeah. Uh, I am running for the board, and I can promise you we will get to the bottom of this. Yeah. And, well, you know, when, when one person has control, look at it this way. I was watching Hunt for Red October the other night, and, and in that movie, there are two people that have keys to launch the missiles. You yeah. know what I mean? Yes. In, in our bylaws, because uh, I have reviewed the bylaws extensively, um, there is a requirement that they have two signatories uh-huh. for all checks, and that any expenses... Uh, by any board member have to be voted on by the ma- and approved by the majority of the board. So I'll leave it at gotcha. that. Real quick, let me ask you, Don, because uh, Paulie said you uh, had to go there. Appreciate you calling in this afternoon. Um, wh- when, when did you start to get suspicious that something might be up? Um, I got suspicious when council first raised our pension contributions and I started asking questions and throwing out some legal uh suggestions of my own uh-huh. uh, steps that I thought we should take and there and I've always heard people at, uh, at the city the code members will tell you it is uh, it was always the Diana show mm. so she was um, a, so she was the one who made all the decisions they defer to her obviously the the uh, way you guys conduct business there at code is going to have to change and uh, sadly though you're out seven hundred fifty thousand dollars like hey Don uh, thanks for calling man appreciate it I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. I Thank just you. Want to you yeah, you got it. Code member Don Stein calling in a Sloney and Tracy show yesterday afternoon. Just another reason we are the big one. Seven hundred WLW. Also got a call allegedly from her uh, from her brother in law, her brother, her uh, brother's brother, and uh, he laid some serious allegations about her past as well. Going to get to those in a minute. And also coming up right after the break, I cannot believe I'm about to. It's Tracy Jones in a moment of clarity. He comes down the hall to me yesterday afternoon talking about this case, and he laid the thing out very simply that says it is the crux of the entire situation. I will share that with you, and we will play the call next on 700 WLW. I don't know how they're going to top themselves today, but Sloney and Tracy at 410. Saturday mail, is it finally going away? Mail, coming to your house at Saturday, is finally going Well, it should. They'll dissect it. They'll break it down at 410 today on 700 WLW. Yesterday afternoon, they also got a call about Diana Fry from allegedly her brother-in-law, her brother's brother, Skip Fry. Here's the call. Now, you're you're the brother-in-law of, of uh, Diana Fry? Yes, I am. All right. Can, give me, uh, you said her day has come, uh, and, and by that you mean you kind of knew this was uh, all going to add up to this? Uh, how do you know that? It's just her path of way of her life. When she started into ours, back when they got married, she started her honeymoon in Florida on bouncing checks all through uh, Sarasota, Florida, um, on my aunt. Oh, boy. Well, wasn't she get in trouble as far as bouncing checks, Skip? Yeah, that's that's against the law. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The $3,000 judgment she has against her from the trophy company is for the T-shirts for the middle management union that was made out the... Um, if you look at the website, Hamilton County, the auditor's website, it all shows plain there. The evidence is a bill that was filled out to the city of Cincinnati. And this was brought up to the solicitor's office years ago, um, to their attention. And they never did anything about it. How long ago? Let let me ask you something, Skip. How long ago was this, this whole, the check thing? And, and, and and when you said it went on their honeymoon? In the nineties. In the nineties. You know? And, they and then, wait a minute. He, yeah, here it is. What thirty the years from us in um, Volusia County, Florida, New Smyrna Beach. Mm-hmm. Um, they did all this before my mother and father died. To all of us, there's six kids, and right. the only person that got anything was them. When was the last time you talked with uh, Miss Fry? Um, I heard her in the background. Monday night, when I got back from Traverse City, I had a note on my windshield of my truck from my brother Tom on a napkin. Um, he says my sister, I called him, it was call, nine, call Tom, 911. I called him, he told me how my sister was dying. And next morning when I woke up, unbeknown to me, my sister had passed away at 625 that morning. And I woke up to going on the internet, Channel 9 News is our mm-hmm website that we pops up when we go on the internet and 
her her face was plastered across it for all this. Wow. What was your reaction when you saw her face? It's about time somebody got her. What was she using the money for, Skip? Living a, lu- a luxury lifestyle. Um, you have to remember, she has three daughters, Allison, Beth, and Angela, who are under a different father's name. Um, and they own a, an LLC corporation, ABA LLC, which has been buying houses here lately for themselves, like five in the last few years. And so the, the, are these for, are these houses property. Skip are these houses for personal use or do they try and rent them out or what do they do Some might believe I am not sure but I'm true I believe that some of them are rental properties and some of them they actually live in Skip did you ever question her how she was able to acquire these properties No we don't talk The only time I ever see my brother is at the um, city auctions downtown or down at the municipal garage yeah. and you know he really just doesn't talk much, you know, I, I don't know. Hmm. He's not my brother, I, I don't think, because a brother would do something like call you when your father's laying in his deathbed instead of hiding everything that they could possibly hide, not even telling you where the funeral was. Wow. Now, do you th- when I blatantly or Jeez, specifically Pete. asked him where my father's funeral was, I wanted to be in the funeral, you know, I in, in a scout meeting were the other places, and that's where I've witnessed, and other people there have brought it to my attention as well, mm. that money was missing there, too. And she was a cashier for the fish fry there. Wow. Um, it was brought up. But and it's been going on for, that. like you said, it's been going on for a, a couple decades at this point, Skip. Oh, um, yeah. In I, the you 90s, know that, sometimes it, she was arrested. My father bailed her out for passing a bad check for a leather jacket for a previous boyfriend. Oh, boy. As, um, um, a, 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 let me ask you something. Maybe, maybe this is too personal, Skip. Um, and I appreciate you, you, you know, uh, bearing your soul here on the show today. Um, it, it, your brother is a different guy because of her. Do you, you believe? I mean, you said you didn't know that the, your, your brother can't believe that your yeah, own brother wouldn't tell yeah. you. She changed he's, him. He's ruined the whole family with her. Her and him has single-handedly ruined our family of six kids that used to travel, do things together. Um, you know, yeah, we had our spats. Yeah, we had our fights, just like any other American family did. Sure. But we had a mother and father that kept everybody together, kept everybody happy, took care of everybody, and it just mm. it fell apart. So, um, so your father died. The, your father died, and you oh six. He and died. you weren't allowed to go to the funeral. You didn't know where the funeral was. They even told the boy priest that's got to that, be tough. They even told the priest at St. Teresa's Church not to tell me where the fu- where funeral was. And the priest at St. Teresa's Church, who I am I'm, as a member of that church and the scout troop up there, right. would not even tell. I'm an eagle from that scout troop. I went to school, oh, grade school at that school. No. Wouldn't tell you. Would not tell me where the funeral was. When I show up and I see the lawyer who was my scout leader standing there, at the funeral who told me he didn't know um, and also told me there was a will and then said there wasn't. Mm -hmm. Um, And I would have to talk to Tommy. The promises of, oh, yeah, come along. Don't worry. You'll get something out of it. Nothing. Um, Like I said, they had everything switched over way before Mom and Dad ever died. And it was to beat the tax man. Skip Fry, Diana Fry's brother-in-law allegedly calling Sloney and Tracy yesterday afternoon. That's pretty rough when you're saying she has a history of questionable financial situations that that looks like okay you know this this is your past that's what he alleges alleged that uh, she drove a wedge between the family this is this is getting pretty ugly and so people want to comment on at least sent me an email she said in the call the brother-in-law says he doesn't talk to him so how does he know all of this um i would think as far as the questionable past that's probably something that happened early on so he knew about it and I'm only speculating based on what I'm piecing together here. And then, you know, maybe their their communication has died off over the years. I mean, it's been 20 years or whatever. And you probably hear, he probably hears things from family members or, or whatever else. Still pretty rough. Uh, at 11.06, we're going to open this up, take a bunch of calls. There's a lot of people that want to comment on it. At 10.35 this morning, our game day feature from Donato's is featuring a geography quiz. Where is Diana Fry?
Doc Thompson, 700 WLW. Doc Thompson on the big one, 700 WLW in Columbus. Mike, you're on the air. Doc, I got some problems with that phone call. What are your problems? I'll, I'll share with my, mine with you after you tell me yours. All right, I hope they're the same. Mm-hmm. Why was this guy estranged from his father that he didn't know he was dying? Yeah. And not know where the fear was going to be. And if they were a close-knit family of six, where is the other four that didn't even let him know? Right, exactly. I and mean, there's too many holes in that whole phone call. If he's on, the, if he's out there listening and wants to call you up and explain some of these holes, that'd be great. Sure, you know what? I'll take his. I'll take any other family members. I'll take Diana, her husband, and I'll. I mean, I'll ask him the tough questions, but I'll give him a chance to explain across the board. You know, the airways are theirs. They can call in any time they want. There's too many gaps. Well, I, I think some of what he said is probably accurate. My thing is, though, you can tell it, it seems like there's a bit of a vendetta. Like he's just he's up maybe just because he's upset. He doesn't like whatever that he's trying to stick it to him a bit. Sure. Yeah, I appreciate it. But that was my observation as well, Mike. Thanks so much for the call. Here's what Tracy Jones had to say to me. Regardless of the family problems, let's look at the case. Let's look back at Diana Fry and what is she is alleged to have done. Taken $750,000 from the union members uh, union dues. How was she able to do this over six years? This is what the case comes down to. How was she able to do this over six and a half years? Tracy Jones oddly comes down to me and says, Doc, it's one of two things. Either there's not enough oversight. How was she able to do this? Nobody noticed. No one called her on it. No one stopped her over six and a half years. Or somebody else is involved. I can't believe I'm saying this, but Tracy Jones, brilliant. At least on that. We'll talk more about 1106 today on the Home of the Reds, 700 WLW. Doc Thompson on the big one, 700 WLW. Very, very interesting story. And part of the reason it makes the Diana Fry, uh, the things that make the Diana Fry story so interesting is because right now we have huge budget problems all over the place. So people are extra skeptical of finances. Plus, we've also got the union argument, the necessity of unions, in particular, public workers, government worker unions, and within the state of Ohio because of Senate Bill 5. Those things are are part of this whole thing because you're going to get union workers out there right now feeling like they're under a little bit more scrutiny, that the unions are under more scrutiny, and rightfully so. You've got a lady who was able to possibly abscond with six and a half, uh, over six and a half years, $750,000. How did that happen? Listen, that has been one of, the, one of the criticisms of unions for a long time, is the oversight or lack thereof. Maybe some things that are done wrong. I mentioned Jimmy Hoffa last hour. Maybe some of the backdoor deals. Maybe people skimming, taking some cash. Are they on the up and up? How was she able, if, if she did, to take 750000 over six and a half years? Don't you think somebody would have noticed? Somebody would have said, huh, why is she uh, putting the union checks into her personal account if she did? Why? Did she write checks on the union due accounts for personal things? Nobody noticed it? Did her husband notice? Nobody else there? I'll tell you you what the the one count uh, indictment, what it centers on. It says that, uh, according to investigators, that she deposited checks written out of the union directly into her own account. I would think that'd be on all kinds of red flags. And that she wrote checks to herself from the union accounts. That one has some red flags, but I think that one would be slightly less. Here's the thing. There, isn't there somebody else there that's balancing the books, that's going through the numbers, some oversight? So if she did write checks to herself from the union accounts, maybe she could have told them, oh, you've got to write a check to me because fill in the blank. And you could come up with a lot of possibilities. Um, I bought those paper plates for the last meeting or whatever else it is. In other words, there's money owed to her. So they've got to you know, make it right. 
Okay, I could see that. But $750,000? Less uh, likely would be somebody else there not thinking that it was weird that she was depositing the checks, if she did, written out to the union into her own account. Nobody said, huh. Yes, there could be some possibilities where someone was supposed to make it out to her and they wrote it out to the union instead. Yeah. But there would have to be a lot of those, unless it only happened, you know, three times, and each time it was $250,000. That doesn't seem very likely. Nobody said, huh, something weird here. I think there's likely to be more counts down the road. If it was, was 757000 over six and a half years, may have been a whole bunch of times. Those would each be a count then. Got, uh, I get some calls here. A lot of people want to comment. Mike and Colerain, how are you? I was watching Channel 19 last night. Sarah Selly had a report where this chick was convicted before for theft in the city of Mount Healthy. And she was prosecuted in Hamilton County on a Class 4 felony. How did she even get that job? Well, and there's the next thing, Mike. You're right. This was 1982. She was arrested for embezzling $1,600 from the ambulance fund and was actually sentenced. You're right. So how do you get that job? How do, how do they hire you for that? Did they not know? How do you put somebody in that position with this type of type of background? So it should come of no shock. I recognize people are innocent until proven guilty, but... When you have a track record, arrested for embezzling in the past and was sentenced, convicted and sentenced, come on. This is part of the reason I'm so critical of unions. This stuff is not new. This is not unique. If that's what your past is, why did they let her take that position in the first place? Get some more of your calls, 513-749-7800, the big one, or pound 700 on AT&T. Give you a little bit about Code. Code uh, is the Cincinnati Organized and Dedicated Employees. It's about uh, 800 members. And these are the the mid-level administration management type people. That's who's in Code. About 800 of them or so. I think at some point, if they continue the investigation, you're going to see somebody else fall as part of this. I I don't know how there wouldn't be more oversight and more people saying, yeah, something's gone wrong. They may not have been, you know, funneling it to their accounts. They may not have been taking the money. They may not have been benefiting financially from it. But somebody looked the other way. I got to believe that. Jeff sent me an email, doc at 700wlw.com. He said, I doubt she had help, but I'll bet there were dozens of people standing around the union office. <laughs> she may have had help, but the people were just standing around watching her. <laughs> you need some help with that? We'll be over here standing around. Jeff, that's shocking, but I appreciate the email. No, I, I think there were people probably standing around and not taking, a part, uh, taking part in it. All right, let's see. Uh, Jeff, uh, another Jeff checked in. He said, I think someone must have given her a heads up so she could uh, skip town before being arrested. Well, here's the thing. She may be around town. We don't know. Early on, people were saying, hey, she's been missing for a couple of days. This is when the, uh, the investigation started heating up. She's missing. She hadn't been seen by code officials for weeks, according to them. Then Tuesday, she sent text messages, ex- exchanged them with a reporter from the Inquirer, suggesting that she had an explanation of why she hadn't been seen in a couple weeks, and it was vacation and approved medical lead, leave for her prolonged absence from the union. Approved vacation and medical leave. The problem is, the union officials, the code officials, were like, we haven't seen her. If they had approved the leave, don't uh, the leave? Don't you think that they would have said, "Well, she's on leave"? Yeah, this does not give her a lot of uh, credibility here. She didn't return any calls though, so the only thing that we have heard officially from her, from anything that I've seen, is some emails or excuse me, some text messages that were exchanged 
with the reporter from the Inquirer. That's the reason I did my contest last hour. We don't know. She could be in the tri-state. She could be in the lobby of my building right now. Or she could be in Guatemala. Nobody knows. Where is she? Diana, come out. Explain yourself. Here's your opportunity. Go ahead and lay it all out there. If you're around, if you're innocent, go ahead and lay the entire thing out. But missing for a couple of weeks, when I say missing, not heard from, not seen for a couple of weeks, she could be anywhere at that point. All right, I got a couple of clips. Uh, I want to play again for you just the the edited version of what her brother-in-law said on Sloney and Tracy yesterday, and then we'll get back to some more calls. He, uh, Skip Fry, her brother's brother called in. Uh, allegedly, it was him. He gave a scathing report about her background, talked about her bouncing checks in Florida, if, in fact, she did. Uh, talked about being uh, estranged from the family. And although I think Skip may have a bit of an axe to grind, even if it's justified, he has some, you know, some problems with the family and her and what's going on, some personal matters. I think it does give some insight into her background if what he's saying is true. This is Skip Fry, her, allegedly her brother-in-law, who called Sloney and Tracy yesterday on 700 WLW. She started her honeymoon in Florida on bouncing checks all through this, uh, Sarasota, Florida, um, on my aunt. You know, I in, in a scout meeting were the other places, and that's where I've witnessed, and other people there have brought it to my attention as well, mm. that money was missing there, too. And she was a cashier for the fish fry there. She was arrested. My father bailed her out for passing a bad check for a leather jacket for a previous boyfriend. Oh, boy. He's ruined the whole family with her. Her and him has single-handedly ruined our family. Yeah. <laughs> If, if what he says is true, and she took money from a fish fry, wow. No, there's lots of people that have accidentally bounced checks. I get that. There are lots of people who have intentionally or accidentally bounced checks but didn't have, you know, the, uh, the morals to make it right. Some people, many people fraudulently bouncing checks. I mean, just part of a scam. There's people who've embezzled money. People who've embezzled from unions. But when you are stealing from a fish fry, what? what? There's a lot of allegations. The ones I mentioned that uh, the Mount Healthy arrest, uh, the allegation the brother-in-law said about the bouncing checks, the father bounce, uh, bailing out about bouncing the checks about the coat, and stealing from a fish fry? Seriously? Wow. All right, now when the, um, the U.S. attorney came out and made the announcement about the, the indictments of Diana Fry, he, he mentioned what the, the counts were, but then one of the reporters asked him specifically how she was able to do this. What were her methods? How was she able to do this? Yes, she you know, oversaw the union. She was the president of the union. But how specifically was she able to do it? Now, I laid out two things. They said she deposited checks written to the union directly in her own account, and she wrote checks to herself from the union accounts. But when they asked the U.S. attorney, he couldn't even explain it. Here's, here, here's what he had to say. This went on for, as we said, since 2005 to the present. Uh, I think the best way that we can describe it, as you saw in the indictment, is that she was the president throughout that period of time. She had control, or at least influence over the finances of the union during that period of time. And, uh, and so during that time, that's basically how she was able to uh, take care of this. <laughs> very succinct. <laughs> very, 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 uh, the explanation was very good, very solid there. She was, uh, she oversaw it, and uh, that's how she was able to do it. That's how she got it done. No, I want more specifics there. Give me some dates and times and, you know, what the accounts were. What were the amounts that, that she allegedly deposited into her account? And then, you know, the amounts that she wrote from, from their account to herself. Give me some of that. Did she do it over, uh, you know, electronically? Were any of them, you know, handwritten out? Give me the details there. Do you have that again? Cue it up to about halfway through what he does or whatever. I want some details. Here's what the U.S. attorney had to say. Here's how she got it done. Here we go. Uh, yeah, you can play that again. Play the U.S. attorney again, that same clip again. Here, here he is. Here's, here's the explanation of how she got it done. This went on for, as we said, since 2005 to yes. the present. Got it. Uh, I think the best mm -hmm. way that we can describe it, as you saw in the indictment, is that she was the president 
throughout that period of time. President. She had control, or at least influence over, the finances of the union during that period of time. And the specifics? And, uh, Here we go. And so during that time, uh -huh. that's basically how she was able to uh, take care of this. Excellent. Nice job. We'll get some more of your calls coming up next at 700 WLW. Doc Thompson at 700 WLW. I got an email from Brent. He said, uh, sh aside from this whole argument that I've laid out on Diana Fry, she's in big trouble with the union. Big trouble. Because her job description doesn't require uh, her to embezzle. That's uh, extra work. So she's, she's doing work that... It was not laid out as part of her job description. So the union is, is pretty upset about that. I can understand that, Brett. Thank you so much for the email. Got an uh, anonymous call. A couple anonymous emails as well. People don't want to go on record because there's a lot of issues there. But somebody suggested that all checks require the signature of the president and the treasurer. If that is accurate. And we'll dig and we'll try to get to the bottom of it. We'll get some information find the facts out we have people researching it right now if that's the truth then i would think they're investigating the treasurer right now as well one check is fine well i mean it's it's easy to say it's it's not right you're going to be in trouble for it potentially but it's easy to say well that one slid by me whatever but if it's a pattern of them how does it start i've never understood this when it comes to embezzlement even the bernie madoff scams how does it happen I ought to believe that it starts off small and you figure, well, I didn't get caught, so you just keep pushing it. So maybe you pocket 10 bucks, 100, couple hundred, whatever, you know, out of a big pot. And it's something that you know you can easily explain away. Oh, I screwed up. That was supposed to whatever. But nobody says anything. Nobody catches you. So then you're like, well, nobody caught me. It's a couple hundred dollars. I'll put a couple hundred more in my pocket. So you do it again. You got a plan in motion in case somebody questions you. No, oh, here's what I did. This is why it happened. But nobody says anything. So then you're like, hmm, might as well try it again. And you do it a bunch of times. And then you start saying, well, hell, if they're not catching, you know, $100, maybe they wouldn't catch in 500 or 1000 or 10000 And it just builds up and up. I mean, you're going to get more and more brazen. Look at people who rob banks. People who've never done anything criminally in their life. And they get under pressure and they decide to rob a bank to get them out of trouble. And the first time they do it, I mean, they, they calculate the thing down to the exact second and whatever. And, you know, they're flipping out and whatever. And if they do it again and again and again, it, they just get more and more brazen. Pretty soon you're just walking in going, I ah, give me the money. You're not even planted it. You think you're not going to get caught. It's not going to happen to you. That's probably what ended up happening in this situation. But look for the other shoes to drop. There's my prediction. Look for it to drop. I expect more counts against her, number one. Number two, look for somebody else to at least be questioned in this, to be called out. All right, coming up after the break, a plan. A plan by a member of Cincinnati City Council to solve their problems. Think of all the problems in the city. All the budget problems, the negotiating problems, uh, the crime, development, all of these problems, stadium fund, everything. There is a blanket solution, apparently. You know what they need to do? Lengthen the city council terms. That's the big plan coming from old lady Quinn Livin. This will solve their problems. Lengthen city council terms to four years. That's what they need to do. Is that a good idea? Is that really going to do anything? Council members elected to four-year terms? Well, old lady Quinlivan thinks that's the way to go. I'll lay out her plan next and also get to your calls if you think it's a good idea or not. It's all coming up on the big one, 700 WLW. Thompson on the big one, 700 WLW. John and Leanne joining me now from Jets Pizza. You guys dropped off lunch for the crew today. I appreciate you coming up. How are you guys doing? Uh, we're doing great, Doc. It's uh, it's a pleasure to serve you guys today. Yeah, I'm gonna. You know, I'm a huge pizza fan, and I'm you know, I'm critical. You guys are ready for me to try, all right? Oh and, yes, all absolutely. Right, I'm very critical of it. But, no question. Uh, looks sensational. I appreciate you guys bringing it up for the staff today. What uh, you said? Uh, 
when I did my uh, best pizza around town, somebody had mentioned yes, on the air that day. Yes, there's a caller that called in. I think it was one of the one of the earlier ones, and uh, that was back. I'm trying to think. It was in October, November yeah, yeah. time frame. And ever since then, uh, our volume has been up 23% at our pizzerias. Wow. Yeah, Ma- Maintained since then. Absolutely. We've been up 23% consistently throughout the next seven, eight months after that show. I mean, it was the most wonderful thing for our business, <laughs> yeah, I can I'll imagine. Bet, I'll <laughs> bet, yeah. No, seriously. Yeah, you get a little surprise there, huh? Oh, absolutely. It was, it. it was quite a surprise. And we had several of our customers call us and say that you had mentioned, you know, it was, you were on, we were on your show. We, met, we were mentioned, and that's directly the result i mean the, the volume has been phenomenal so you've got and you've got two locations where, where are your locations uh one in uh, uh mason on social foster in mason montgomery and the other in westchester on cincinnati dayton road and uh, 129 cross country highway how, how long have you had the business uh five and a half years at uh mason. at mason and, two and uh, approximately two and a half at westchester had you had you owned businesses in the past? What made you decide to? Uh, well, I got quite frankly, I was a, a chief financial officer for several financial firms okay. prior to uh, starting the pizzeria, and um, basically got tired of the corporate world, in all honesty, and decided that uh, I wanted to try something new. And we uh, we try basically we tried a couple of different uh, pizzas. We thought Jets was one of the best offerings they're based out of detroit and uh, we wanted to start with the best and and it's been great i mean absolutely wonderful and now i'm on my own boss i don't have to worry about answering anybody else that's its own problems too <laughs> yeah, yeah but yeah so what, how how difficult is it to run your own business then because there's a lot of people out there right now saying hey maybe i'd you know like to start a business you know what it's a lot of work it's a lot of work it's incredible it's incredibly difficult you have to like what you're doing if you don't then i suggest that you don't start your own business. But if you like what you're doing, then it's it's absolutely wonderful. We work a lot of hours. Between my wife and I, we probably put in 135, 140 hours a week. But you know what? We enjoy doing it. And we love the customers, and we love interacting with the customers. It's it's just a great feeling. What's the uh, what, what's the secret right now to success? Is just putting in the hours and riding the wave? Perseverance, absolutely. And uh, getting your name out. Uh, that's the most important thing, is, is getting your name out. We do a lot of marketing. Uh, individual marketing from house to house, door to door, uh, just making sure people are aware that we're there, bringing, and that bringing product to different businesses. Yeah, yep, yep. Free. We offer. Product. I just need to get it in your mouth. Yeah, yeah, so right. It's it, you, you have to work on that. I mean, it's day in and day out, and um, the employees are the key right now. Too. Oh yes, absolutely. Making sure you have a good staff and making sure They're that they understand people. customer service is is uh, critical to, uh, in today's environvironment. All right. Well, it's nice to hear, though. It's nice to you know mention on the air here. Big one does its job, right? 23%. Absolutely, that's, it does a great absolutely. job. We love you guys. Uh, John and Leanne from uh, Jets Pizza. I appreciate you coming up, bringing us to the staff. And I'm going to try it during the break. I'll let you know. I'm going to be honest here. Okay, okay no problem, Doc. Thank you. All right, thanks. thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right, get to a couple of quick calls here, too. Andy, uh, how are you? Yeah, I was just calling to comment that I was a window clerk at the post office in the 80s. Uh huh. And the number of window clerks that got caught not so stealing was uh, the rate was unbelievable. But my point oh, is... You're that, ta- oh, because of the uh, the post office cutting back and running into trouble. I know Slaney Tracy are going to go uh, talk about Saturday mail going away about 4.10 today. Well, the, most of, my point is that uh, this Fry case is most of the time these guys would start borrowing and paying it back and then get in over their head. Oh, okay. That's what you're saying. Yeah, were they... And then it got to the point where they were so short that some that the boss knew something was going on. Maybe they get a little behind in their bills and they're in an right. emergency, and they go, "Well, I'll just borrow well, it and I'll pay it back Tuesday." One guy likes the ponies pretty much. Oh yeah, then you get into you know, uh, what, <laughs> I win today. Yeah, whatever your vice is, you know what I mean? Whether it's gambling, drugs, or something like that. Right. Right. This, uh, but see, the weird thing about this, Andy, if we're if we are to believe what we have heard, um, first of all, from her brother-in-law and others, and then second of all. What happened in Mount Healthy in the early 80s, it doesn't seem like there's some vice involved. It sounds like this is just a person who's bad with, with finances and doesn't see the distinction between her money and other people's money. Yeah, but I can't believe that two years ago a lady got caught at Croker's up in Western Hills with lottery t- She had stolen $100,000 worth of lottery tickets. I can't believe she never got caught before she got that deep. That's a good point. Yeah, that was in the paper. That's that was all in the news. Yeah, I vaguely remember the story. All okay. right. Well, I appreciate you joining me and uh, calling in. Good, uh, good stuff. All right. So, what's the big idea? What's the big plan? Lori Quinlivan has decided what what needs to happen is for council members to serve four year terms. That's her plan. 
I got the official press release from her. She, uh, she's going to have a public hearing coming up Monday. The proposed ordinance would increase city council terms to, uh, to four years. She said the goal is good government and running for election every other year is, bi- is, is a big obstacle. She said if, I, if uh, all nine council members were running to keep their job this year, we would be engaged in the serious study of merging city, uh, weren't running, excuse me, this year. We would be engaged in the serious study of merging Cincinnati Police and Hamilton County Sheriff's Department and other potential cost-saving ideas that require long-term efforts. Now, I understand what she's saying. It is difficult when you're running for election every year, every couple of years, depending upon it. Congress faces this same problem. As soon as they get elected, they start running for office again. The campaign season is officially the year you know, the second year, but they do it, you know, that first year as well. So is it a good idea? Should council lengthen their terms to four years? Would you support that idea? If she says it's about big picture items where you've got to look way down the road, you know, if somebody's elected for 10 years and they serve, then they don't have to worry about, you know, getting reelected right away. They're able to concentrate on the big picture. There's a little bit of an argument for that, but the argument also is, They're not as accountable to the people. They're not as accountable. They don't have to worry about it. And you see that when it comes to senators serving six-year terms. The first couple of years, a senator will do all kinds of nutty stuff. Then they get to that, that third year, that fourth year. You see big changes. You see it all the time, especially first term Congress uh, senators. Four years. No, I can't support that. Sorry. No, I can't. And there certainly is the question of, and, and based on some of the nutty things that have come out of old lady Quinlivan in the past, I got to think it's self-serving. It's self-serving to say, I want you to elect me for four years so I don't have to run into that way. I'm guaranteed of a job for four years. Do you support the idea or not? Your calls next 700 WLW. Doc Thompson, 700 WLW. Dan Carroll's in again for Willie today, coming up at 12.06. He's going to do more on Diana Fry. He's going to talk with Leslie Giz on, on what, uh, what the city is uh, thinking about this. Leslie will give her comments. And I'm sure he'll be touching on uh, the breaking news that, that just came out. Brian joins me now from the newsroom. Tell me what's going on with the former uh, Broncos Joe player. Dieters yeah, just announced the uh, indictment in jail in Hamilton County is Nate Webster. He's a guy who played for the Bengals 2004-2005. Uh, really was supposed to be uh, the key to Marvin Lewis's defense, but he got hurt, came here after winning the Super Bowl with Tampa Bay. The story is that since he's been here, uh, he's been involved with a teenage girl. And uh, uh, Dieter said it was an ongoing relationship that she hid from her parents and uh, come to find out that the girl, or the, she's 17 now, is the daughter of a former Bengals coach. Ooh. Uh, you know, they didn't want to identify him, said it was the position coach uh, for uh, uh, Webster when he was in town. So it's pretty easy to go back and figure out who that is. That's what Joe Dieter said today. The girls expected to testify at the trial. Apparently, Webster had all kinds of guns, including a, a, a semi-automatic assault rifle and had threatened the girl and her family if they went public. Uh, Bill Reinhardt's at the news conference right now. He'll have more coming up at noon. Okay, he's scheduled to be arraigned? He'll be arraigned at 2 o'clock this afternoon. He is locked up now in jail. Uh, Dieter's made it clear they're going to go for a high bond so that he can't get out because they're afraid that he might go after the girl or, or her parents. Wow, this is really bizarre. So he, he's been here since he played, though. He came back. We understand that he was uh, uh, the defensive coordinator for the Bellevue High School football no, I mean, team no, I mean, last season. I mean the player. Webs, Webster, yes, yeah, yeah, I'm talking oh, about. Oh, yeah, oh, he, he, He's okay. out of the NFL now. Uh, I think 2008 was his last season. He's like 33. He, uh, he came back to the Tri-State and was coaching a, a, a boys' uh, high school team last year. I don't know if he was going to be associated with Bellevue again this year or not. Okay. Uh, but um, so I came across a story that he was here doing that, hoping to get on maybe get a college job eventually or a pro job. Okay, and then obviously knew the, the coach from his days playing. Right, and I, this apparently is a relationship that's been going on for some time. Uh, the girl finally told her dad about it, and um, and he went to police. So 17 now, but been bo- going on maybe at for least years. going back to 15. Joe Dieter said today, and he said it's uh, multiple, multiple counts, and then he's not charged with every case. So of it, was, but he said it was a definitely an ongoing Webster's relationship. 33 now. He's 33. She's 17 now. Um, uh, the coach involved, we think, is 50, with the two young daughters.
we don't, the coach is not in the area any longer, though. No, from what I understand, he's I don't know if his family was still living here. Maybe um, he was a Bengals coach. If we have it right up, just just a couple of years ago. That's really interesting, though. If if he has moved on, family, the girls still here, though. Here. I mean, here. these guys maybe bouncing yeah. around. I mean, they had connections, both of them, or... to the Denver Broncos, too, as well. So maybe there was some time where they spent, spent time in Denver because I know that the, 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 the Bengals coach was a star player himself for a while uh, uh, with the Broncos, and Webster was, uh, was with the Broncos at the end of his career. But the alleged involvement between the two was had, here. And uh, that's had, the here reason. and maybe other places, too. But for sure okay, we know sure that the, the crimes related to the things that happened in Hamilton County. All right. Well, I appreciate it. We'll have more throughout the afternoon with the arraignment. And uh, wow. All right. That would be uh, pretty salacious if it happened other places as well. And possibly charges faced there. Uh, You could possibly face charges if, I mean, we don't know if you have connections through other teams and you're traveling. We don't know how close Webster was with the coach. They obviously know each other. He could have been very close with him, and that's how he got close to the girl. Well, because, I mean, how else would you get close with her? I mean, they, they could be neighbors or anything, but if it's coach's daughter and you know the coach, it stands to reason that they had some sort of ongoing relationship, the player and the coach, you know, maybe over for dinner, stuff like that. Maybe they know each other in other towns as well. Hmm. All right, that one's going to continue to be very interesting. Bob Price Hill, you're on 700 WLW. Thanks for taking my call, Doc. What do you uh, What do you think of uh, Lori Quinlivan's plan to uh, to go to four years? Do you like it? You're, you're in Price Hill. I'm I'm thinking four years and out. Oh, one term, term limited. One term. Hmm. Start with a brand new council. They oh. all leave. <laughs> yeah, start with nine new ones. Bob, you know what? That, I would give her. I would. I would approve it then. That's uh, that's pretty clever. You know what? We'll go along with it, Lori. If uh, we clear council first, I, you, nobody serving now can serve in I, the first. Uh, the you know the first council with the new term limits or with the uh, the new uh, term expanded term. Let's see him pass that. <laughs> that's pretty funny. You know what, though, Bob? That makes sense because if you're somebody that is on council and you're saying that in order to go forward and bring the city, we need to look down the road. If you're saying we need this, then show me that it does not serve you personally by bailing for a term. Exactly. And this council has been afraid to tackle anything. They've kicked the can down the road, and there's hardly left any, anything left of that can. Yeah, you're right. I, like, I do think it's a problem that, unfortunately, we can't think long-term at, at any level of government because the new people come in and change it. And quite often, Bob, the plans we're talking about, the things that need to be done at any level, are things that need to happen over the course of 5, 10, 20 years sometimes, 50 years. Exactly. And so, I mean, she has a point there, but four years isn't going to do that. Right. I appreciate the call. Thanks so much. Uh, you know, four years isn't going to do it. If you're saying you need a 20-year plan for the city, the real way you do something like this is you lead. You make an argument that people can understand. You lay out a creative, innovative plan that the average person can understand. And you say, this is what we want to be, and this is what we can be and will be if we follow this plan. This is what will be in five years, 10 years, 20 years, 50 years. Yes, slight adjustments will be made along the way, you know, for things you can't count on, revenues, populations, disasters, whatever. But this is where we're going. And if people really believe that and it's a good plan and it makes sense, you're not going to have a problem, even if the next people come in. Because the next person that comes in understands that the people want that, that master plan that's going to lead you over the next 50 years or so. So that's the real way to get it done. One more quick call. Jenny, you're on 700 WLW. Do you like the idea of expanding city uh, council to four years? Well, Doc, I would for Leslie Giz because I like her, <laughs> but not for old Lady Quinn Levin because I don't like her. <laughs> Do you really like Bob's idea where we say fine, but you got to bail for one term? That sounds good. I mean, hey, put your put your money where your mouth is. If it's not about you, old lady Quinn Levin, then you go ahead and bail for four years, right? That is right. And then we will welcome you back if people want you. Fine. Yes. Do you think she'd be willing to do that? No. No, neither do I. <laughs> It's about, it's about her. Okay. Thanks a lot. Appreciate your comments. Doc Thompson on the home of the Reds. 700 WLD. Oh! Oh! All righty. That is it, ladies and gentlemen, the end of the Doc Thompson Show. But before we go, as always, let's find out what we learned today. Brought to you by Metafast. Lose up to 20 pounds in the first month. We learned that Orlando is not the capital of Florida. 
We learned that even Tracy Jones can say something intelligent once in a while. We learned that Missouri is the skeptic state. We learned that Webster has been busted. We learned Diana Fry may have embezzled $757,000 and Code has no idea how it happened. We learned that old lady Quinn Livin, if she was really serious about doing what's right for the city and it wasn't about herself, she'd bail for one term. We learned that ironically, the commissioner of game day is bad at game day. We learned the capital of Kentucky is not pronounced Louisville. It's pronounced Frankfurt. We also learned that Enron was not a Dallas company. <laughs> ironically, these are a lot of things we learned because of the commissioner, Sherry Rowland. Have yourself a great day. Good night, Steve Cannon, wherever you are. On Young. Now, go home.